Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know when you're watching, but I'm glad you're watching. And thank you for joining us today. And we are going to be learning about the very first Christmas in the run up to Christmas. How exciting! And we're going to be learning about uh, the birth of the Lord Jesus, we're going to be learning about Bethlehem and Nazareth and the wise men and the shepherds and Mary and Joseph and all that brilliant stuff from God's Word, the Bible. So sit back, get comfortable in your chair and enjoy. If like me you have missed singing songs together at assembly and you want to sing them at home, uh, if you go to YouTube and you put in my name, Alistair Walker, and there's how you spell it up there, if you put in Alistair Walker then you will uh, it'll take you to all my songs there's about 60 of them and there are some new ones as well as all of our old favorites uh, like totally god totally man take my hand and follow me s for sin round the walls of jericho only a boy called david mr noah built an ark are you messy noisy nosy all of them they're all there uh, plus a whole load more so if you want to sing at home, then go to YouTube uh, and have a look at them. Our first song video is going to be Go Tell It in the Mountains by the brilliant Life Tree Kids. And uh, while we can't sing out loud in class, uh, you can do the actions and give it a try. Good, act there's good actions for this one. Also, look out for a girl. Uh, this girl. I don't know her name, but I'm going to call her Lexi Jane because there's a little girl comes to our uh, Monday night club in uh, church called Explorers, and her name is Lexi Jane. And last year at her school, Wisher Academy Primary, she was brilliant at playing uh, Mary in the Christmas Nativity play. So we're going to call this little girl Lexi Jane. Look out for her uh, and see if you can notice the colour of her clothes. And one of the objects that she's wearing, the colour of it is going to be the question for our bonus question this time in the quiz.
the hills and everywhere go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go, tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. So our Bible readings today are all going to be about the birth of the Lord Jesus. The first verse is found in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1. So it's the New Testament part of our Bible, the second part of our Bible, and it's about three quarters of the way through the whole Bible. So if you were to take a Bible and open it up more than halfway, nearly three quarters of the way through, You'd probably come to the book of Matthew, which is the first book of our New Testament, then Mark, then the book of Luke, then John, and then the book of Acts and Romans. There's a book of Luke that we're going to be reading a verse in today. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And as usual, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to see if you can read it, and particularly if you can get that big long name there. And you have 10 seconds. Don't read it out loud if you're in class. Just read it in yourself. If you're at home, feel free to read it out loud if you want. Then after the 10 seconds are up, I'll read it out loud. So here we go. And the verse reads, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from, do you get it? Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. The name Caesar is kind of like our name King or Prime Minister or President. Caesar was the person who was in charge of the Roman Empire and who lived in Rome. And Augustus happened to be the Caesar who was in charge when Jesus was born. Now for our next verse. Two verses actually, found in Luke chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Again, 10 seconds. This time, this time is going to be tricky. There are four different place names, all in the country of Israel. If you get them, oh, big well done to you. But give it a try anyway. 10 seconds starting from now. Did you get them? Let's read it together anyway. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from, first one, Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he belonged to the house and line of David. You see, Galilee was a region in uh, Israel, the same as Judea. And it may be like a shire or a county in Scotland or in uh, England or a state in America, but Nazareth and Bethlehem were the two towns. So Nazareth was in the state or the county or the shire of Galilee and Bethlehem was in the state or the county or the shire of Judea. And if you got all four of those big names correct, well, you get the seal of approval. Seal of approval, get it. Next verse. It's the same chapter, Luke chapter 2, but it's verse 7. 10 seconds, and the tricky word this time is this word. See if you can get it. Go.
It reads, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. But do you notice what I got wrong there? I said she brought forth her firstborn son. Actually, it reads, she brought forth her firstborn, a son, because Jesus wasn't just the firstborn son. He was her Mary's firstborn child. She hadn't had any boys or girls before Jesus was born. She had sons and daughters after Jesus, but Jesus was her firstborn child, and he was her son. And Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes. That's a very unusual word that we don't use a lot. And it just means there were soft rags. We, we would wrap babies up in maybe a shawl or a blanket. They would wrap them up in really soft little rags and to keep them warm and to keep them safe and secure. If you got the word swaddling right, a massive thumbs up to you. That was brilliant. And that Our next song video, there's no actions for this one. This is just for watching and enjoying. It is fantastic. It's by uh, Listener Kids and it's called There Is A Star. I uh, hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoy watching uh, the little animals that are in it. It's a nice little animated song video and I'm sure you're going to love this one.
We are continuing with the Christmas story today and it's one of the Tales of Truth series and we call it a tale one of the Tales of Truth series because it's about it's a true story it's about real people from real places at a real point in history it's a story that really happened it's not a made-up story it's not a kid on story this is a real true story The story so far, uh, we usually think that the story of the birth of the Lord Jesus begins at Bethlehem, but we remembered that actually it begins 104 miles up the road in Nazareth. And Nazareth is a, a lovely little village uh, in the north of Israel, and in Nazareth there was two people uh, who were engaged to be married. Joseph, the builder or carpenter, who worked with wood and made things out of wood, and Mary, his fiancée. Then an angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she was the person that God had chosen uh, to carry and bear his son. And it was going to be a miracle and God was going to make her pregnant by a miracle. Then we learned about the priest in the temple, Zachariah, and how God told him, listen, your wife, God is going to perform a miracle in her, and although you and Elizabeth are too old to have a baby, you are going to have a baby by a great miracle that God is going to do. And when he is born, you must name his name John. And we thought, whoa, why do Mary and Joseph have to leave their home in Nazareth? Will they make the long journey ahead? Will they ever find somewhere to stay? Here's part two of the Christmas story. Joseph was lying in his bed one night. Mary had told him that she was expecting a baby. Joseph knew he wasn't the dad. Joseph thought, I'm going to have to break off this marriage. I can't marry her. The law says I'm supposed to report her. She's supposed to be punished for being unfaithful. And as he was sleeping, God appeared to him in a dream. And God said, Joseph, Joseph, remember the Bible that you've been reading since you were a little boy. Remember the verse in Isaiah when it says that a virgin lady is going to conceive and bear a baby, it's going to be a miracle and it's going to be a sign to all Israel. I've chosen Mary to be that virgin girl. She's the one who's going to have a baby, even though she's never been with a man. She's not been unfaithful to you, Joseph. I have performed a miracle in her. This baby that's born, it's going to be a miracle baby. And Joseph... I've chosen you to look after that baby and provide for him and protect my son while he's living here on the earth. And Joseph, I want you to marry Mary and to love her and to love the baby and to protect him and watch over him. But you must make sure that you call his name Jesus. I've already sent the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that he must be called Jesus. Now I'm telling you he must be called Jesus. So Joseph said to Mary, listen, God appeared to me in a dream and he told me that you've been telling the truth. You haven't been telling the lies. You've not been unfaithful. And you know what? He also told me that we're to name the baby Jesus. And Mary lit up a great big smile. She's, the angel Gabriel told me that we're to name the baby Jesus. 
Wow! How amazing is this, Joseph? We are going to be the earthly parents of God's son called Jesus. And Mary was really happy. And she said, the angel Gabriel told me something else. What, said Joseph, what did he tell you? He said that my old cousin Elizabeth, who's too old to have a baby, he's performed a miracle on her as well, and she's going to have a baby. Joseph said, well, Mary, you better go and visit her. And Mary went to see her old cousin Elizabeth. And there was Elizabeth. And she was six months pregnant. She had only three months to go. And Mary stayed, said, I've come to visit you, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said, oh, oh, do you know, oh. Mary, the child inside my tummy jumped for joy when you came. Because he knows the person inside your tummy. He knows that you are going to give birth to God's son. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for the next three months and Zachariah until little baby John was born. Meanwhile, back in Rome, at the head of the Roman Empire, Caesar Augustus called for his chief general and he said listen here you know that having a huge army costs a lot of money and I need lots of gold and silver and coins to pay all the wages and to build roads and to pay for uniforms and uh, I need all these things and I need to be able to pay for them so I want to make a law and I'm going to send this throughout the whole of the known world and everyone must go to their hometown and register so that they can pay me, Caesar Augustus, tax on their earnings and I will charge them some of their earnings to pay for my army and for everything that we are building and doing here at Rome. So the general said, Hail Caesar! And off he went to take Caesar's law to every part of the known world and tell them they must register in their hometowns and pay Caesar Augustus tax. Well, Nazareth wasn't the hometown of Joseph or Mary. Their hometown was Bethlehem. So in order to register, they had to travel the 104 miles back down to Bethlehem. It might have taken them five or maybe even seven days. And there was no cars, no buses, no trains, no helicopters, no aeroplanes, nothing like that. The only way they could get there is by walking or maybe if you were fortunate enough to have a donkey, you might be able to have a donkey to ride that distance. But it's still... Even on a donkey, it's going to take about a week to get there. It's going to be a long journey. It's not going to be a comfortable journey. You're going to have to set up camp every night and tent and, and pitch a tent and, and, and sleep under the stars. You're going to be praying that it's good weather. You don't want to get rained on for five days. So off Mary and Joseph went. And at the end of their long journey... They'd be tired, hungry, thirsty, dusty. The donkey would be tired and needing a rest. And they got to Bethlehem and they chapped the doors. And the innkeeper came. It's a bad news. You've taken so long to get here. The town is filled right up. Everyone's been coming to register for paying their tax to Caesar. There's no room at the inn. No room. How disappointed do you think Joseph and Mary are? How sad do you think they feel? They've travelled all this journey. Maybe Mary's expecting her baby. It's due to be born. What are they going to do? 
There was no room for Jesus in the inn that first Christmas. But will you make room for Jesus in your home this Christmas? Or when you're opening your presents and eating your Christmas dinner, why not remember the first Christmas and the person who made Christmas possible? And that person is Jesus. And we think about him at Christmas and we think about the fact that he was born in a manger. The Bible teaches in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Now he doesn't say if rich people open the door of their heart and let me in, I'll come in. Or if good people or special people or the best people he says if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in that teaches us that jesus is standing at the door of your heart the door of your life and he's just gently chapping and he's saying can i come in is it okay if i come in is there any room for you, for me in your life? Is there any room for me in your life? Remember Mary and Joseph had to chat the door at the inn and they were told there's no room. Oh, Jesus is standing at the door of your life and he wants to come in and be your special friend. Where will Mary's baby be born if there's no room at the inn? Why are the shepherds so afraid? Will the wise men ever find what they're looking for? It's time for a quiz. You know what to do. If you're sitting down, stand up. Let's get everybody standing. Let's all be doing a quiz together. Remember, it's left hand for answer A, right hand up for answer B. And if you get the answer wrong, sit back down, but still play along. Still put your hands up. Just don't stand back up. I want to see how many people can be left standing at the end of the 10 questions. But if everyone gets a particular question wrong, then for the next question, we're all back in. Everyone can stand back up and join in with the quiz. So here goes. Question number one. What town was Mary living in when the angel appeared to her? Was it the town of A, left hand Nazareth, or B, right hand Bethlehem? Five seconds to decide, start from now. It was Nazareth. So if you have your left hand up, you keep standing. If you don't have your left hand up, sit down. Question two. What was the name of the man that Mary was engaged to marry? Was it A, Joseph, or B, Josiah? Go. It was Joseph, Mary and Joseph. So if you've got your left hand up, keep standing. If you've got your right hand up, sit down. Question three, how did God let Joseph know that he should still marry Mary? A, God sent the angel Gabriel to tell Joseph, or B, God spoke to Joseph in a dream. Five seconds. God spoke to Joseph in a dream. So if you have your right hand up, keep standing. Otherwise, sit down. Question four, what is the name of Mary's cousin? Is it A, Ellen, or B, Elizabeth? Go. It's Elizabeth. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. What 
miracle has God performed in both women? A. They are both going to have a baby boy. Or B. They are both going to live for 200 years. Go. They are both going to have a baby boy. And for both of them, it's a miracle. Mary has never known a man or kissed a man or been with a man and Elizabeth is too old. God has performed a miracle for both of them. Question 6. What Caesar was in power in Rome at this time? Was it A. Julius Caesar or B. Caesar Augustus? Five seconds. Three, two, one. Caesar Augustus. Seven. Why did Caesar Augustus make a law saying that everyone had to register in their hometowns? Was it A, so they could vote for the next president, or B, so they would have to pay tax to him? Five seconds from now. Caesar Augustus wanted everybody to pay tax to him. Eight, how far is it from Nazareth to Bethlehem? Is it A, 104 miles, or B, four miles? Go. According to Google Maps, it's 104 miles. Question nine. What bad news did Mary and Joseph get when they arrived in Bethlehem? A. There was no room at the inn. Or B. All the rooms cost double the usual price. Five seconds. There was no room at the inn. No room at the inn. Question 10. Last question. Wonder who's still standing. Jesus would like you to make room for him in your life. So what does he do? A. Left hand up. Jesus stands politely, knocks and waits for you to let him come in. Or B. Right hand up. Jesus barges right in even if you don't want him. Five seconds. The Bible tells us in the book of the Revelation that Jesus stands politely at the door of your life and knocks and waits for you to let him in. And if you're still standing, well done. That's brilliant. You deserve a pat on the back or maybe a little thumbs up or a victory cheer. Or maybe you want to do a little happy dance because you are a winner. Well done all the winners. And for everyone else, join the winners, stand back up. Because this is our bonus question. In the Go Tell on the Mountain song video, what colour are Lexi Jane's gloves? Are they A, yellow, or B, pink? There she is. What colour of gloves do you think would go with that outfit? Five seconds. Go! Pink! She's wearing pink gloves! And they look fantastic. So if you got that, and your hat, your right, you've got your right hand up, you keep standing, because you got that question bang on right. In fact, everyone can keep standing because this is our super duper bonus question. In the There is a Star uh, video, song video, what are the first two animals we see? I think we see four animals in total. But what is the first two that we see? Is it the sheep and the rabbit? Or is it the sheep and the reindeer? Mm, only five seconds. Go. Cool. 
it is the sheep and the rabbit that's the first two if you got the super duper bonus question right give yourself a little clap because that is brilliant and you too So Mary and Joseph have finally arrived in Bethlehem and we're going to listen to the brilliant Life Tree Kids singing O Little Town of Bethlehem. Again, if you're at home, join in, sing along. If you're in class, remember, for safety reasons, we won't do any singing, but join in with the actions. Uh, Life Tree Kids have always got brilliant actions for their songs, so join in and enjoy. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.